Hello friend, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Becky, if you're new, I've got my green apron on because it is St. Patrick's Day and we are gonna be celebrating with a St. Patrick's Day feast. I've got five recipes printed out. I didn't wanna go the super traditional route and do corned beef and boiled potatoes and cabbage. So I have fun kind of Irish themed meals that we're gonna make and I hope I think it's gonna be absolutely delicious. So I did do a few things yesterday to prepare for today. One, I went ahead and I got my meat marinating. We are gonna be making a brisket in the oven. Never cooked brisket. I've done it with the help of my mom. I guess my mom did it. I kind of was there on the smoker, but we're gonna cook it in the oven because that is what the corned beef is typically made out of. So I thought instead of doing corned beef, I thought about making corned beef from scratch, but that takes two weeks and we don't have that kind of time. So I, had, I got that marinating last night. I also got the potatoes sliced that I just drained. I've got my cake here and I'm gonna share with you how I made everything and what I prepared yesterday. And while I do that, I'm gonna get this pan heating up and I need to slice up some bacon because we are gonna be making a potato pie. So I'll see you back after I share with you everything I did yesterday to get ready for tonight's dinner. I was not planning on having time on this day to get anything ready for the dinner, but the way that my day worked out, I had about an hour. So I thought instead of having to do everything on one day, I might as well go ahead and prep some stuff on this day. And so here I've got some flour. We are gonna make a simple pie crust in the food processor. I love making homemade pie crust. It's so easy. It's simple, humble ingredients. It is flour, salt, just a touch of sugar to help with browning, butter, and water. So I can link all the recipes we're gonna be making down below. Most of these recipes are all brand new to me. This is my tried and true pie crust recipe, but the pie and the brisket. We're gonna make a really delicious Brussels sprout side dish and a cake. The cake is incredible and I'm excited to share that with you and we're gonna make it on this day as well. So here you can see that the pie crust, I blended it in the food processor until it was incorporated well, but not wet. When you're making pie crust, or any sort of pastry, you really want to use as little as water as possible. And so practice makes progress when it comes to making pie crust. So even though there's still quite a bit of dry crumbs, we're going to just press this powdery kind of mixture together. And then once I was able to get it into a ball, just by pressing it, not kneading it, we're not trying to develop gluten, then I wrap it in some plastic wrap and I push down and I force the crust or the dough into the plastic wrap and that really helps. And then we're gonna pop this in the refrigerator. One of them is actually gonna go in the fridge and one is gonna go in the freezer. Anytime I make pie crust, whether I need one or two, I always make two. Pie crust freezes beautifully. It's super easy to thaw. You just pop it in the refrigerator for a couple hours and then you can use it. And that way I basically just meal prepped a little bit. The reason that spurred me on to do any sort of prep the day before was actually because I decided to make this brisket recipe. Originally, I was going to do just the potato pie, the Irish soda bread, the Brussels sprouts, and the cake, but I thought it would be kind of fun to kind of stretch my culinary skills and try to make a brisket. And so when I was looking at recipes, a lot of them said to start marinating them the night before, and so I needed to do this on this day. And then I was like, well, I could make the pie crust. I could also make the cake. You'll see, we're gonna make the cake in just a minute and have that prepped and ready to go. So on the day where I have people coming over, I just have a few less things I need to do and less cleanup. So here in this bowl, we're gonna make the brisket marinade. I've got salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion, and ketchup. And then in my ketchup bottle, I went ahead and put the red wine that it called for. I shucked that up to get any extra ketchup out. And then I also went ahead and put the Worcestershire sauce in there, shaked that, and then put that in there. And then the last ingredient is some chicken broth. Now, I could have probably read a bunch more recipes on how to do this. I did not realize we were basically going to be braising 
this brisket in the oven with this sauce mixture. And so this was a very big learning experience for me and I've taken away a lot of it. I'll walk you through the whole process when we actually bake it, what I did, what went right, what didn't go right, and kind of walk you through what I learned during this process. The last two ingredients in that were some maple syrup and some chicken broth because we definitely need a little bit of liquid for the brisket to braise. So I'm gonna pour half of that in this baking dish and then I did cut the brisket in half because it was huge and I trimmed off quite a bit of the fat on the backside and then I pour the rest of this braising liquid on top. I cover this, I pop this in the fridge and we will be baking this tomorrow when we actually have our guests coming over. We're having grandparents over for this St. Patrick's Day dinner. So here is the cake we're gonna be making. We're gonna be making Guinness chocolate cake with an Irish cream buttercream. And this turns out fantastic. If you like a dessert that's not incredibly sweet because there is the Guinness in there, it's got a little bit of that, you know, that kind of funkiness you get from a stout beer. And the cake comes together so easily. So we're gonna start with some sour cream and there wasn't any fancy directions when it came to this cake. You just put all the wet ingredients into the mixer and then you mix that together. You know, sometimes when you make cakes, you have to like separate the eggs and beat the egg whites and, you know, do a little bit of the dry mixture and a little bit of the wet mixture and you have to kind of do things in a bunch of different steps. This was so easy. You just dumped all the wet ingredients into the mixer and then you mixed up the dry ingredients and put that in. So this has sour cream, oil, eggs, vanilla, and Guinness, of course. And then I'm using avocado oil. You can use whatever kind of like neutral flavor oil you have on hand. I think the recipe called for vegetable oil. And I am going to use my scale in grams to weigh out the dry ingredients. And this was again, very, very, very straightforward. It was cocoa powder, flour, our leavening agents, and sugar and salt, of course. You have to have a little bit of salt anytime you make dessert, or at least I think so. I, I think it helps kind of balance the flavor. And I am weighing them out. I am falling in love with weighing my ingredients out when I feel like I have the bandwidth. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, if I'm just whipping dinner together real quick and I will just get in there and I won't weigh any ingredients but when I'm making things for other people I generally like to weigh the ingredients now and I have learned you all have taught me never ever ever mix anything on your scale because you can ruin the calibration of the scale so here instead of like sifting it together I don't even remember if the recipe said I needed to sift the ingredients together. I just took a whisk and kind of broke up any of the lumps and mixed all of the dry ingredients together because now we are gonna go ahead and just put the dry ingredients directly into the wet ingredients. So that's how easy it was. It is so easy generally to make cake from scratch. I love making cake. I never was a big cake baker, but I've been enjoying it more and more, and I've been really enjoying the art of decorating cakes. So here, I'm just checking my ingredients, making sure that I didn't miss anything, and I did need that cake batter to mix for a bit, so while that's mixing, I'm going to go ahead and just prepare my cake pans. Now, this recipe did call for two eight-inch cake pans. I do not have eight-inch cake pans. I have nine-inch cake pans. I did line it with some parchment paper, I didn't wanna go out and buy eight inch cake pans for this. So what I know is that because these cake pans are bigger, they are going to just take less time to bake and my cake won't be quite as tall. I think it would be really beautiful if I had eight inch cake pans because the cake itself would be a little bit taller, which I think is always pretty, but we're just using what we have and that is just going to work just fine. So now that I have the cake in the oven, I'm going to go ahead and just prep my potatoes. I just peeled four russet potatoes and I'm going to slice them really thinly. So this pie is a bacon dill cream potato pie with onions. And it sounds kind of odd. I would have never, ever, ever thought to make a potato pie until I was just like researching kind of like Irish theme meals. And this is so good this is one of the best things plus we make an irish soda bread 
this is one of the best things we made on this day. It's kind of why I like doing these themed dinners because it gets me looking at recipes I would not normally make on a Tuesday or, you know, just like a random weekday. And this one turns out fantastic. And you all know I grow a lot of potatoes. This would be a great way to use up a lot of the potatoes that come out of the garden. So the cake's out of the oven and now we are back to present day. I wrap these up in some saran wrap and we are going to frost and decorate these beautiful Guinness cakes today. So now that we're all caught up, I'm gonna slowly render this bacon down in this pan. I want this to cook low and slow, so I'm gonna turn that down. And I'm gonna go ahead and preheat our oven for our Irish soda bread to 375. You can see my recipes that I have there. And over here, I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven to 400 and we're gonna bake our potato pie in this oven. We are gonna be baking our brisket or I'm gonna be putting it in the oven in about an hour. So I went ahead and I took it out of the refrigerator just so that it would kind of get some of that chill off of it. And it will cook a little bit more evenly if it's not refrigerator cold going into the oven. So while our bacon is rendering down, I'm gonna go ahead and roll out the pie crust that I made yesterday. I've always wanted to try making Irish soda bread and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it turns out today. So as soon as I get this rolled out, we're gonna start on that recipe next. We also need to frost our dessert and prepare our Brussels sprouts. Growing up, my mom would make a St. Patrick's meal and it was corned beef, boiled potatoes, and cabbage. And I don't have a corned beef. What I really wanted to do was actually make corned beef myself and cure it myself, but that takes a good two weeks <laughs> and we don't have two weeks. So I am going to just do a fun little twist on kind of the more traditional recipe. Just turning in the edges of the crust and I'm not gonna do anything super fancy. I wanna make sure that I've got my crust all the way up to the sides. And this recipe that I found online for a potato pie, which seems very fitting for an Irish themed dinner, is it used puff pastry. Well, I don't have puff pastry and I can whip up a crust in a few minutes, just a traditional pie crust, so that's what I went with. And because there's a lot of butter in this and I want this butter to stay cold and our potatoes and bacon, are not quite ready. I'm gonna pop this into the fridge and while this is chilling and our bacon is cooking, we will go ahead and get going on our soda bread. And I have never made soda bread before. It looks really easy. So the difference between an Irish soda bread and a yeasted bread is that there's no yeast in Irish soda bread. It is leavened with, I think baking powder or baking soda. I have to look at the recipe instead of yeast. For the soda bread, we need a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. And I didn't need to use that whole sheet, so I just cut that in half. And this is what we'll cook our soda bread in. Normally, I would clean all this up before we start the next recipe, but we're actually gonna be kneading our bread on the silt mat just a little bit. So we can just go ahead and move right into the next recipe without having to clean up because we're gonna get it dirty one more time. So this bread starts with four cups of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup of white sugar, or four tablespoons, and then a half a cup of softened butter. Now it didn't say how soft, so I hope that this is the right softness for this. Might be a little bit on the soft side, too soft, but we'll make it work. Oh, you know what? I think I was supposed to mix the baking powder and baking soda in before I put that butter in there. 
that I forgot, so we'll get that in there now. Salt, baking powder, and baking soda. It makes sense that it has a lot of leavening agent because this is what is leavening this bread. Actually, that's exactly how I was supposed to do it. I didn't do anything wrong yet. Mix that together. Just wanted to check on my bacon because it's smelling incredible in here and it's looking fantastic. When I render bacon, I like to do it low and slow so that it can get nice and crispy and the fat can render out before it gets too browned. I can link all these recipes down below and my new apron. I have washed it twice and worn it a few times, but it is still pretty new to me. It has a couple things I love about an apron. One, these are metal and I can actually attach the straps and it has a cross back. I like when the straps come off on an apron so when I throw it in the wash, the straps don't get all weird. And it's kind of a canvas material. It comes in a ton of colors and I wanted to wear it and wash it a few times before I showed it to you because I wasn't sure how these little decals were gonna wash up because they're not real leather and they've washed up great so far. So I've only washed it twice, but I'm really happy with it. One of my relaxing type videos to watch is nail art. And a lot of the nail artists that I follow have this apron and I was able to find it. And so far I'm loving it. I only have it in this one color, but it comes in like five or six colors and I plan to get it in a few more colors. Okay, so our bread is looking great. It's, this is almost like a giant biscuit because we're gonna add the next ingredient. The only other thing that you wouldn't find in a biscuit is this right here, which is an egg, but I think some people put eggs in their biscuits, but I don't. One egg, and now we're gonna add one cup of buttermilk. I did get real buttermilk for this because I wanted to see how well it's gonna turn out following the recipe exactly. A lot of times instead of using real buttermilk, I'll use whole milk with a little bit of vinegar or lemon juice in it. But I wanted to see what this was gonna turn out like with the real deal. So I just mixed that egg together. Now I'm gonna mix this together. So this is gonna be a little bit on the sweet side because it's got a quarter cup of sugar in it. Okay, so now what we need to do is turn this out and we're actually gonna need this just a little bit, it says. Seems a little on the dry side, but it might come together if I just work it a little bit. You know, this feels a little bit dry to me. So what I think I'm gonna do is just pour just a drizzle of buttermilk on this. There we go, I think that's the, the correct amount there. It says the dough will be a little sticky, so I'm glad I added a little bit more buttermilk because it was definitely on the dry side. Maybe I was a little too heavy handed with the flour. The recipe that I'm following does not have a weight for the flour. So there might have been just a little bit of compacted flour. I hope this is right. Many of you have probably made this before and know if I have done something wrong or not, but I am just gonna go with it. So now I've got some melted butter and I just added some oh, buttermilk to that and we're supposed to brush this all over the top of this bread. This is gonna take a while to cook because it's so big. Now I'm supposed to take a sharp knife and put an X on the top. It didn't say how big, so I hope that's how big. Now I'm gonna bake this. Oh, there's a, of course. There's a cast iron in there. 
in a preheated oven at 375 and I need to look to see how long this needs to bake for. It says 45 to 50 minutes, but we're supposed to check the doneness after 30 because I have a feeling this is gonna take a long time to bake. And I don't know if this is gonna puff up a ton. So I wanna move this rack up a little bit because it was pretty close. Our bacon looks almost done here. This smells incredible. This is bacon I got from a local farmer and it is just beautiful bacon. So I'm gonna let it get just a little bit crispier and then we can move on to the next step with our potatoes. I put the potatoes in water overnight because I didn't want them to turn brown, but I don't want a bunch of water in my potato pie. So I'm just gonna shake this a little bit to try to get any residual water. Whoop! Throwing potatoes, residual water out of them as possible. I need to prep some onion and dill for our potato pie. Fresh dill is one of my favorite herbs and I love it with potato. Oh my goodness, it smells incredible. Okay, our bacon is nice and crispy and the recipe says we are not supposed to remove any of this bacon grease. We are supposed to put all of our potatoes and onions right in here. I think I'm gonna take a little bit out and then if I feel like it needs more, I can add a little bit more. Once I add the potatoes, I won't be able to take out any of that bacon grease. So I can always add it back in. I'm just gonna wipe this off before I stick it back on the heat. I think I'm gonna let this get just a tiny bit crispier. Maybe turn the heat up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna add my onions. Now that our onions have softened, I can add my potatoes. Now we're not looking to cook the potatoes here. We're just looking to coat them in the bacon drippings. And that's probably more potato than it's gonna fit in my pan, my pie plate. So I probably sliced more potatoes than I need. And I can already tell that wasn't gonna be enough bacon dripping. So I'm gonna add a little bit more so that we can coat our potatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat way down again. I'm gonna season with pepper and all of this beautiful fresh dill that we chopped. I've never made anything like this before. Oop, losing potatoes, that's okay. So I'm gonna mix this until it's well incorporated. This isn't even cooked yet and it looks and smells incredible. I can't remember if I mentioned this already yet or not, but these are all brand new recipes to me and I've never made anything even remotely like this. I wasn't exactly sure about it, but now I'm thinking it's gonna turn out pretty well. Or at least I hope it does. Now I have not seasoned this yet with salt. I'm gonna be pretty light on the salt than what I normally would just because there's so much bacon in there. I'm gonna mix that up and then we're gonna get this into our pie plate. I did go ahead and turn the stove off and I wanted to make sure that the dill was incorporated well and the pepper was incorporated well and that there was a little bit of bacon grease on every side of every potato. So this recipe is not even fully done yet. We've got another really yummy thing we're gonna add to it, but we need to get it into our pie plate next. And I think the easiest way to do this so that I can layer this nice and tight is just to get in there with my hands so that there's not big air pockets and then I wanna get make sure I get the bacon in there and layer the bacon and onions. I'm glad I took some of that bacon grease out of there. And this is where this recipe gets even more divine 
is we've got some cream that we're gonna drizzle over the top. There's no cheese in this recipe. I'm gonna do this slowly so it has time to kind of work its way into all the nooks and crannies. Oh my goodness, friend, this right here could make the main dish. This is just a side that we're having. This would be really good, I think, for Easter too. It just screams brunch to me. So excited about this one. Now, I am not worried about it bubbling over. Normally when I make pies, I would put something underneath it. But surprisingly, I did not overfill that. But what I am worried about is that the top is gonna get too brown before those potatoes are cooked and before the bottom of my pie crust is nice and golden brown. So I just went ahead and put a piece of foil over the top so that I can kind of control the browning that happens on the top. Now I do have this brisket out here and it's still very cold. And what I've been doing is just very carefully so I don't splash or anything. So I'm just rotating this I did this a couple times last night after I made it before I went to bed, is just rotate it so that the marinade is kind of getting on all sides. And now I need to clean my mess up because I want a clean space before we start decorating our cake. One thing I was able to do before I got started was unload the dishwasher so I can get all of these dishes that I just made directly into the dishwasher, which in the long run will save me time. I probably should have been loading these into the dishwasher as I was making them, but I was kind of just wanting to get in here and get things going. The bread is already starting to look fantastic. I save my eggshells to give back to my chickens. So I just have a little bowl there that I collect the eggshells in and then any compost or anything that they might want to munch on during the cooking process, I can give to them. You know, the bacon grease in that pot, I'm glad I took most of it out because there's still quite a bit in there. I don't want that going through my dishwasher. So I'm gonna grab just two paper towels here. And just wipe that out so that doesn't end up going through my piping system. Okay, plumbing system. That's all the dishes from over there. Alrighty, friend, I just reread my recipe for my brisket and I was planning on three hours for the brisket and then I reread it and it said rule of thumb about an hour per pound and it's best when it's pull apart tender. So I probably should have got this brisket in the oven an hour ago. So I'm just gonna get it in this oven now and we're gonna hope for the best that it's done in time. Sometimes that's what happens when you try making new things. I did not weigh that brisket. I cut that brisket in half. It was a whole brisket, which is usually around like eight to 10 pounds, which is way too big for the amount of people we're having tonight. And so I cut it in half. So it's probably, I didn't weigh it. It's probably five, four and a half pounds. Oh well, it's okay. What we will have, if we don't end up eating that brisket for dinner tonight because it's not done, we can have the potato pie as the main dish, our Brussels sprouts and our soap bread. Okay, I'm almost done cleaning. I just need to wipe these counters off and then we're gonna make our frosting for our cake. Cakes are ready to be frosted. I got the kitchen kind of reset. So I'm gonna make the frosting in my KitchenAid mixer just because that's gonna be a whole lot easier. 
and I am running a little bit low on powdered sugar. So I am going to make one three-fourths this recipe. I'm not gonna make the entire recipe because I don't think I have enough powdered sugar. And I'm okay with that because Josh and I aren't huge frosting fans. And so this is just gonna be a lightly frosted cake instead of a heavily frosted cake. Yeah, I need six cups of powdered sugar. I do not have six cups of powdered sugar. So what I'm gonna do is actually start by measuring out how much powdered sugar I have so I know how much butter and Irish cream we're gonna make. Or how much Irish cream I'm gonna put in because we are making an Irish cream frosting. So that's two, three, five. I'm gonna start with that. I probably do have six in there, but I think this will be enough frosting for us. I just won't put so much frosting in the middle layer. In high school, I had the opportunity to go to Ireland and it was one of the most beautiful countrysides I have ever, ever seen. Everything was so incredibly green. It did rain a lot while we were there. We went in the summer, but it was so beautiful. And the countryside, what I thought was the most incredible thing about the countryside is that all the farmers or I think that's what they, I, I don't know. When we were in the country, you could tell where people's lands or fields were divided. And instead of using fencing, they had these stone, incredible stone fences that must have taken a lot of manpower to build these stone fences. And they were just so incredibly beautiful because they were made out of natural materials. And it's just not the quality, you know, that we typically see in today and it was just so beautiful. So we're going to add a quarter cup of Irish cream to this cake. Was I supposed to shake that first? I don't know. This is the first time I've ever bought Irish cream before. Now I'm going to very, very slowly mix that together. This butter I did let sit out at room temperature overnight. This is not done. This needs to beat for a good five minutes till it's super light and fluffy. And so I'm just gonna scrape these sides one time here and then I'm gonna put the mixer on and we're just gonna let it go. We are almost there. It's getting nice and light. It's actually lightening up quite a bit. I think that's gonna be more than enough frosting for us. It'll be perfect. I may have tasted this just a little bit and it is so delicious with that Irish cream. I think with the Guinness cake, that juxtaposition of kind of that bitter tartness with the sweet Irish cream it's gonna be a winning combination. So here I have all of my parchment paper so that we can decorate this cake without making a complete mess. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of frosting on the bottom of my cake pan just so that I can keep the edges cleaner. Let's see if I can do this. Now the trick here is always, can I center the cake with the parchment paper on the cake plan without having it way too to the right or to the left? Woo! Or to the front or back. Now this recipe did say to use two eight inch cake pans. I don't have eight inch cake pans, I have nine inch cake pans. And I didn't want to go out and buy cake pans for this. So I just baked these cakes 
a little less time because the cakes are thinner because the diameter of the cake pan I started with was wider. Okay. When I was in Ireland, I went to the Guinness factory, which was pretty cool. We went to the factory and got a tour and it was really fun. I was not old enough to drink the Guinness at that point, I was in high school, but it was fun to go to the factory. I love going to food factories. I haven't been to many of them, but I enjoy kind of seeing how things are made. So here we got this. I'm gonna use my offset spatula because I always find, oop, just, that's why I have the parchment paper down. Oh my goodness, this smells so delicious. Okay, I don't wanna to put too much on the inside because I don't have a full recipe's worth of frosting. So I'm gonna take creative license. I just ran and grabbed a chocolate bar. The recipe says to frost the outside. I think this is really beautiful, the white and the dark. It's so dark because we put the Guinness in it. And the recipe says to make a ganache to drip down the side. Well, I don't wanna do that. So I'm going to just take some semi-sweet chocolate and ooh, see if I can get most of it onto the cake. Shave it. onto the cake. And that right there, my friend, I think is good. Perfect. Cake pan is clean. So I'm just gonna set this aside and there's dessert. I think that's almost the perfect timing to take our bread out and oh my goodness, this looks incredible. It basically looks like one big, huge, giant biscuit. So I'm gonna let this cool here, and then we can prep our Brussels sprouts. This is going a lot faster than I thought it was. We have our bread out of the oven, our cake is baked, our potatoes are about halfway done, our protein is in the oven. I actually transferred my, what is it called, brisket over here because I put it in, I think, a little late. So I crank the heat up to 400 over here. I'm gonna let it cook at 400 for about an hour and then I'll turn it back down to see if I can kind of jumpstart the cooking process. The last dish that I need to prep is the vegetable and I'm not gonna cook that until closer to when people get here. So I am going to, it's grandparents coming over tonight to celebrate St. Patrick's Day and so, they're gonna be over here closer to dinner time. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and get the vegetable prepped and then we'll get the table set too. So I can get that set in advance of people coming. And I think there'll be some time to relax. The bread I, can be served at room temperature with butter and jam and the potato can be served at room temperature. I think you could serve it hot, but I think it would be just as good at room temperature. So I've got my cutting board out here. So instead of, you know, like boiled cabbage, which is probably a little bit more traditional, I thought that uh, sauteed Brussels sprouts would be good. And the recipe I found has a really yummy kind of sauce that goes on with it. If you wanted to grab out a food processor, you could, that would probably go a little bit faster than doing it by hand with a knife and a cutting board. But I already have this cutting board out. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just do this by hand and I'll wash these after I get them sliced up. So now we're gonna make a little bit of a sauce that's gonna go on top of, or on our Brussels sprouts. And the first thing we need is the lemon zest of one lemon. And I wash this lemon really good. Anytime I use the zest of a fruit, I always wash it first. Get all that goodness out. And then we need to juice this lemon. Okay. 
This recipe talks about using anchovies. I didn't want to get anchovies today because I don't have any in my house. And so what I'm gonna do is just substitute a couple teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce because that has anchovies in it. It's gonna give you that umami flavor without having to use anchovies. So I just put a little bit of Dijon mustard in there, some Worcestershire, now some maple syrup, not a lot of any of that. Some crushed red pepper, not a lot of that. Some salt, and I'm gonna mix this together. And this is going to be our dressing once we kind of fry these up. I wasn't sure what that was gonna taste like with the lemon and the Worcestershire Dijon mustard and maple syrup. That is fantastic. So that's gonna be really, really good. I'm gonna wash up my Brussels sprouts and then I'm gonna set these aside until dinner time. Now it's time to set the table and I'm gonna use things I already have. I happen to have some fresh eucalyptus in these mason jars, which is perfect because it's green for St. Patrick's Day. I have these green placemats that we're gonna get down here. I love when I do invest in some new table decor things. I love when, or any sort of home decor, I love when they're not specific to a specific holiday so that I can use them over and over. Like I could use these placemats for Easter because they're kind of spring, they're light green. I'm gonna use them for St. Patrick's Day. And then I'm gonna go into my, oh, I grabbed an extra plate. My little cabinet there where I keep my other table decor stuff. And I'm gonna see what I can pull out and finish decorating this table with. I do wanna get into making a beautiful table and learning the art of a beautiful table. So I'm slowly but surely kind of investing in pieces and kind of trying to build that skill. Oh, I have these. Let's see. I have these I could put down. Does that look good? Yeah, we'll use those. I think it's super awesome having candles lit for parties. I think it just adds a nice little ambiance. I went ahead and I pulled the pie out of the oven. I did end up just putting a foil lined around the outside so the crust wouldn't brown anymore, but the top could get nice and golden. You can see how beautiful we've got that crust cooked all the way through. The potatoes are tender, so that just needs to cool so we can slice into it. Let's go ahead and check on our brisket. This has been cooking now for two hours at 400. I never turn the temperature down. I did put a parchment paper lined baking sheet underneath just in case it dripped. And this is what this is looking like. I've had the foil on it so that it will kind of braise in there. Ooh, look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is kind of foreign to me to cook a piece of meat like this. It's pretty tough still. So this is the fat side. Should I flip it over and let it keep cooking? I for some reason thought that we were gonna be slicing into this, not shredding it, but it's so, I don't know. I'm gonna put this back on. It's very hot, so. Okay, close this. And we're just gonna let this cook. So the table's set and now we're just basically waiting for this to be done. And then we can cook up our Brussels sprouts. So I can finish tidying up and relax. Actually, I can't really relax. I just got an Azure order. 
And I did share with you what I got because we've got some fun projects that are gonna be coming up. We are gonna be preserving up some citrus here. So what I need to do is actually get all of this put away and then I can relax until my guests get here. And then we're gonna cook up our Brussels sprouts and I'm excited about tonight's dinner. My guests have arrived and I pulled this out of the oven and I let it rest for about 20 minutes. And while that's resting, I'm just gonna finish up the last few things. So I put some butter into my enamel cast iron. I got that piping hot and then I got my Brussels sprouts in there and I'm gonna saute those while I cut up this soda bread. When the dinner's all over, I'm gonna get on and share with you what I thought about all of these recipes but Josh was standing right there and he wanted to try this bread and his eyes lit up. So then I end up taking a little sample and oh my goodness, friend, this is so good, so good. And so I wanted to get a good char on these Brussels sprouts, so I didn't touch them for quite some time. I let them cook. I went ahead and I got the candles lit. We turned the lights down just a bit. We turned a little bit of music on. And now we're all just kind of hanging around the dining room island and just chatting and talking as I kind of finish up these final things I need to finish up for the dinner. I've got my fat separator here and I went ahead and I skimmed off the fat. There was so much fat that rendered off this brisket. And so I wanted to be able to remove some of that so that we could have a little bit more of a sauce. Once the Brussels sprouts were nice and toasted and about halfway done cooking, I went ahead and I poured in the dressing that we made. And after the brisket cooked, I went ahead and sliced it up. Now I only end up slicing it on two ends because this did not cook long enough. I learned so much about making brisket from this experience and what I learned is it takes way longer to cook than what I originally anticipated, but we were able to slice off a little bit of the brisket from both the corners where it was a little bit more tender. I then went out into my seed growing room and I gave some of my onions a little bit of a haircut so that I could get some fresh green onion tops onto this potato pie. And I'm gonna go ahead and slice into this. This was perfect because you definitely wanted to serve this at room temperature or at least where it had cooled down enough to where it's set up and the potatoes come out in one piece and this was so incredibly delicious we got the bottom nice and crunchy and here is what the dinner looked like all together so we sat down and we enjoyed a wonderful wonderful dinner and then i sliced into the cake i made some decaf coffee and we were able just to hang out and chat with grandparents and it was a wonderful way to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. I've been really enjoying doing these themed dinners because it definitely gets me out of my cooking comfort zone. Everybody has left and the party is over. So I'm just kind of doing the last bit of kind of tidying up. Honestly, I'm not gonna fully clean the kitchen until tomorrow because I'm tired, but I wanted to go over those recipes with you. By far, the soda bread, 10 out of 10, we'll make that again, absolutely fantastic. Josh loved it, I loved it, everyone who came devoured it. Brussels sprouts, so good. I wasn't 100% sure about the lemon and now can the Worcestershire and the maple. Normally I don't like sweet Brussels sprouts, Fantastic, we'll definitely make that again. The, I'm looking over there, <laughs> potato pie. Who would have thought? Delicious, easy, very humble ingredients. I mean, it had bacon in it and butter in the crust, but delicious, I will make that again. Brisket, not the best thing I've ever made. I think it should have been low and slow in the oven all day long. I actually cut the pieces off you saw and then I took the main part, that middle part, and it's still in the oven. It's been in the oven. It is now almost nine o'clock. It's now been in the oven. I think I put it at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, yeah, it's been in the oven almost six hours. That's the way to go, low and slow, because it was not cooked down to where it was super tender. This first time I've ever cooked brisket, definitely a learning curve. I think the flavor was good, but 
Brisket is such a tough cut of meat that it really, I think, needs that low and slow. And I have yet to taste the cake yet because I wasn't quite hungry when I served the cake. I actually cut a ton of it and sent it home with people because I don't need a ton of cake here. But I thought I would give it a try with you. So this is the chocolate Guinness. Mm. You can definitely smell the Guinness. An Irish cream cake. Mm. I already tasted the Irish cream frosting. I'm not a huge frosting fan, but I really like what that added to this. You don't really taste the Guinness. Yeah, you can taste the Guinness. So if you're not a fan of that like strong, stouty flavor, you might not enjoy this, but I think it's delicious. So I am going to put away the perishable items and then I'm gonna to go to bed and I'm gonna finish cleaning the kitchen. Oh, I should check on, I'll check on this one more time. Don't mind the edges. That is going to be a project for me to clean tomorrow, but this is so much more tender. I think I'm even gonna let it go. Oh, see, look at that, it's just falling starting to fall apart. So I'm gonna actually let this go. I'm gonna put a little bit more broth so it doesn't burn or maybe a little bit of just water. It's gonna be quite the chore for me tomorrow to clean that baking dish, but I'm probably gonna let this cook for another hour or so. Oops. And then I'll take it out of the oven, let it cool, and then I will pop it into the refrigerator and we will enjoy that later this week. So we'll consider that meal prep. So it was really fun kind of trying all these new recipes, experimenting. Sometimes things are your new favorite and sometimes you learn from them so that you can grow as a cook and get better for next time. So don't forget, I will link these recipes down below if you wanna try any of them. And if you are new, consider subscribing because I do lots of big cooking days like this where we do themed dinners or we do birthday parties or holidays. We garden, we preserve food all the fun things. So thank you for being here, friend, for taking time yet again out of your day to spend time with me. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope you had a fantastic day. And if you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.